Hey everybody, it's Sharon here. And today I'm gonna to show you what I did with some old hand saws that we found in some of the Kentucky barns. Uh, they were just kind of all over the place, all different shapes and sizes and all sorts of condition. Some of them I really had to dig for, but I think it was worth it. So I just took them and I kind of started laying them on the grass and I thought, that almost looks like a windmill. So I took them home, kind of laid them out in some different patterns. I didn't really like that. Uh, so I thought, all right, let me go back to that windmill idea. So here's the start of the idea and let's see how it turned out. The wall behind the love seat in the Kentucky cabin is open and I've been thinking of things to put on there. So I wanted to incorporate them into the decoration in the house. So what I'm looking at is creating a windmill Oh, it'd be like a sawmill. So I'm laying it out just to get a good idea of the size and how many saw blades I want to use. Now where that string is, so imagine that being a piece of uh, bent wire, or rod, I mean. That almost looks like too many. It's going to be a small living room. All right, so you can see they will be offset like a windmill so it'll have a little bit more 3d effect to it I have no idea I'm gonna do this yet but I don't know I'll figure it out and here is what a five blade looks like so I'm gonna use six I think that'll be a good space between it and not look too crowded uh, but yet not look too far apart there we have it for those of you that have seen a lot of my rustic uh, crafts, you know that I really don't like to do more than just a light restoration. I love rust and I want to keep that original finish on there as much as I can, but still have to get rid of some of the gunk. So each of the blades got a good going over with some steel wool and sandpaper. So one by one, they all got cleaned up to a certain level. And then I just use a wipe on poly and it really keeps um, a nice luster to it. It'll make it a little bit darker, which is perfect um, because I want it to stand out against the wall. If it was just a light brown, light gray, I don't think it would have worked. So now the fun part. Like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I just basically made, you know, the half circle. I started spacing them out. They ended up being about nine inches apart with the number that I used. So I got a visual of it, kind of knew what I was looking at. Did the outline. And once I had the outline done, I needed to bend that rod. So what I did was I just screwed um, some screws on the board and did it above and below the line. And that way I could easily bend that um, rod and put it in place. So once I had that in the right shape that I wanted, uh, I needed to cut that straight one on the bottom. I had Joe do this part because I know my limits and working with wire and especially welding, something I've never done. So thank you, Joe. So for some of you, this may look familiar. This is the old tongue and groove. It's that heart pine uh, tongue and groove beadboard that we got out of that salvage house. So I, you know, initially I put it with the beadboard up and after I had it laying out, I thought, Oh, uh, there's too many competing lines. So I ended up flipping it over, which is really the, the rough side. It's not meant to be the good side, but I used it anyway. Um, basically, just got everything glued into place. I made it into a square. And um, after that, looked at how I was going to mount the back because I needed some kind of support. So I just used a couple more back there. Got a little light sanding. I didn't do it to a, a really fine sanding just enough to get the roughness off I laid the saws back on and then I put the rods in there and you can see I added a middle one that's because I thought it needed another one so I drew the outside line and that's actually where I ended up um, cutting the board to make it fit for the saws it ended up being five feet by about three feet tall and that was perfect because the wall was six feet. Now, I looked at blue and then I ended up with white paint. 
and I actually went back and sanded it off so it was a little bit more rustic. Once I had the boards how I wanted them, I screwed the uh, rod that was already in that shape just on each side to secure it and, it and I put it behind the saw blade so you won't even see it. Now the fun part. Um, I totally made this up. I ended up just screwing one screw behind each saw blade to offset it, making sure that I kept the right spacing in between. And then I drilled through the handle. I didn't drill holes into the saw blade. Uh, I could have done that and ran that rod through it, but I didn't really want to drill through the saw. So I ended up using four inch screws for each of the saws. And then I went underneath them just to catch them with a smaller one. Uh, because I didn't want them to come down. Uh, they are very secure. They're not going anywhere. Now this type of welding I can handle. I really didn't need a, an actual weld. So I just needed to tack together all of the ends. They were all securely um, placed on that board. So they weren't going anywhere. It was just a matter of making it for cosmetics. It really didn't have a function. I needed something heavy to um, put on there to weight it down. And so I used... <laughs> the old window weights that I pulled out of the rehab house. And I'm going to grab these window weights here. Okay, what am I going to do with them? Heck, I don't know. I sure ain't going to leave them. And I'm just going to screw it right straight into the wall, which is the beauty about having all this uh, board up. Makes it a lot easier hanging stuff, that's for sure.